Morning guys, um, welcome along to uh, my latest video. So this morning um, I'm going to talk to you about filtration, um, koi pond filter, why we, why, why we need a filter at all, <coughs> and what exactly it does, um, uh, the different, the different um, types of filters, uh, and then I'm going to go through my top 10 what I consider to be the 10 best filters so okay firstly then uh, just very briefly why why we need a filter at all uh, there's two different two different kinds of two different types of filtration if you like in your pond firstly there's mechanical filtration uh, so this is all, all the solid bits of material that you can you can see in your pond the, the um, <coughs> koi waste leaves dust uh, you know algae um, uh, blanket weed etc the, the, the mechanical physical bits of material that are in your pond that you need to get out um, so that's the mechanical filtration and then you've got biological filtration which is slightly more difficult as you can't actually see it but but, but this is basically um, harmful chemicals that your fish themselves produce so koi produce ammonia uh, in, in reasonably large quantities um, left unchecked it will quickly build up to a level where where it, it, it actually becomes toxic to your fish um, so so you need a biological filtration system to remove that ammonia uh, and to maintain a level that is is um, is suitable for your koi to live happily um, now I, I will produce a video on ammonia specifically and talk about the chemistry and go into a lot more detail but but suffice to say for this video um, the, the koi produce ammonia uh, left unchecked it will build up to a harmful toxic level very quickly actually um, and so you, you need a biological filter which it, it is essentially providing a home for a, a colony of bacteria whose food source is ammonia um, and they, they then consume the ammonia that your koi produce um, they the Unfortunately, the waste that they then produce is nitrate, um, and, and also left unchecked. This will grow to a level that becomes toxic for your fish um, again very quickly. So, a second biological colony grows, a uh, different kind of bacteria within the same filter um, that then consumes nitrate, um, and and the, the waste product that they produce is nitrate, um, which, which is less of a problem it's less toxic for your fish um, and that nitrate you can dilute that down with water changes or, or you, you plants will consume nitrate uh, there's various ways of handling that but it, it's less of an issue to your fish um, so so they are the two kinds of filtration mechanical filtration biological filtration and moving on to filters um, the, there's two several ways of going looking at this two several different kinds of filters there's there's a filter a single filter system um, that will do both mechanical and biological filtration uh, and for this video i'll call that an all-in-one filter um, so a single filter that does both mechanical and biological on its own you can then buy filters that just do mechanical filtration um, a mechanical filter and you can buy filters that just do biological filtration um, and obviously if you buy one one or, or the other of those then you need a second filter you know you need both filters um, but they do generally tend to be better um, the filters that just focus on one job so they're the types of filters um, so uh, moving on then to the to the filters themselves uh, and my top 10 so at number 10 I have got box filters um, now uh, I'd, they're not they're not at number 10 because I consider them to be the 10th best filter in the world uh, they're at number 10 because a lot of people buy these for their first filters and I feel I need to put them in there so I can just tell you how bad they are really just just to f make the point that they're not suitable for a koi pond uh, a, a small couple of hundred gallon pond with a couple of goldfish in they may be able to cope when once you move on to koi the waste they produce the ammonia 
these box filters they're just not suitable they're not fit for purpose for a koi pond most beginners um, read the numbers and see the cheap price and fall for the the blurb end up swapping it very quickly for a, a purpose-built proper koi filter so at number 10 I've got box filter um, please avoid them okay so number nine at number nine uh, I've got pressure filters so a pressure filter um, basically they're, they're a compact filter very quite a small footprint um, as the name suggests they operate under pressure uh, they, they, they're quite handy and you can quite often get them with a UV light inside which, which will look after your, um, your green water, stop your water turning green. Um, so quite a good all-in-one compact filter. Uh, it tends to have a valve on top uh, for, for, the, for the cleaning process. Um, you don't tend to need to get dirty on general cleaning but they do they do need cleaning a lot and, and periodically they also need you know stripping apart opening up and cleaning out um, internally as well a, a, a more um, you know a more solid clean um, better than a box filter um, they have the limitations uh, good good price point is 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 relatively good um, limited to the size of pond they'll run um, and and they do they do come come you can get issues with bacteria building up inside you get stagnant uh, material inside um, if you're not careful if you don't clean them enough um, so uh, yeah at number nine I've got um, a pressure filter okay at number eight uh, I've got multi bay filters now a multi bay filter um, uh, essentially I'm talking about a linear multi bay filter so you, they tend to be very big footprint, very very big filters, um, uh, and what you've got is uh, your water from your pond will come into a, a large, some, often a vortex, uh, a big vessel, um, which gives an opportunity for solid material to settle out, to drop out. It'll then flow into a second mechanical stage, which may be brushes or mats, etc., and sometimes even a third. Then once the water is clean of mechanical debris, it goes into a biological um, bay, which, which will have various kinds of media to, to, to colonise bacteria on, um, which will take out your, your nitrate and your ammonia, uh, and then return to the pond quite often via UV. Now a multi-bay filter, the downsides, um, the footprint, they, they are big, uh, you know, you need a lot of space also cleaning um, they need a lot of maintenance so and quite often you need to get dirty you need to get in get brushes out take matting out clean it down um, difficult quite quite time consuming to to look after and to keep on top of but if you've got the time to put in and you, you enjoy that and um, then then they can do a, a, a good job mid-range price point um, good all-round filter but they, they are for people who've got time to really you know really put into it to get the best out of it so that's that's my number uh, my number uh, eight which, which is multi bay filters okay at number seven I got a bubble bead filter um, now this is again an all-in-one filter quite a specific type of filter quite niche um, essentially it works by pumping water up through um, a couple of chambers quite often with, with packed with beads, um, little tiny beads, so the, the mechanical waste is trapped by the beads and then uh, and held, or then passes on up and through more beads which are then clean of mechanical debris um, and, the, and the biological uh, bacteria can, can colonise this area and then, and then you've got the biological effect um, and then back you know return back to the pond um, so they, they're good good bio, particularly biologically they have a big surface area big capacity for biological filtration they do work well um, they're, they're quite expensive uh, certainly over the kind of mid range I would say um, you know more expensive than a multi bay but but easier to maintain than clean by backwashing which is which is quite a straightforward process um, quite a good option but not one that you see 
too often. Um, but yeah, number seven bubble bead, good, quite quite a good option. A little bit more expensive. Okay, number six, I've got um, a bead filter. So diff different to a bubble bead in that this is now a pressurized system. So um, with that, you, you get a little bit more versatility in how you're able to install it and incorporate it into a system, um, into uh, the rest of your pond filter system. Um, it's a single chamber rather than two separate chambers. So uh, a, a vessel, a round vessel, um, essentially with with tiny beads in um, and the beads trap mechanical waste and also provide a surface for mechanical uh, for biological um, filtration bacteria to to colonize so um, very small footprint uh, re really are very compact for, for what they're able to do um, quite expensive um, but well well capable of filtering a, a, a koi pond in its own right and all in one filter um, yeah a, a really good option and, and um, pros and cons but I, I think they just have the edge on the bubble bead filters um, so yeah number six I've got bead filters okay number five uh, number five I've got sieve filters single use type filter which is a, a mechanical filter um, uh, a sieve can be can be pump fed or gravity fed so it, it's quite versatile for fitting into an existing system or, or tying in with a, a biological filter um, relatively inexpensive um, there are cheap ones there are dearer ones but relatively inexpensive um, they filter out down to about 300 microns so it, it's it's essentially a screen inside um, a stainless steel screen um, and the waste is trapped up to size up down to sorry 300 microns in size um, good option for mechanical only and, and works well in conjunction with a biological filter such as a trickle tower um, or some of the other filters that will come to so yeah that's that, that's number five that's a sieve filter okay at number four uh, at number four i've got the evolution aqua easy pod um, so this is another all-in-one filter this does both mechanical and biological filtration um, and this is this is a smaller all-in-one filter for, for smaller ponds uh, at this the pond that I run here this this little tank is, is just under a thousand gallons this this actually runs just on a um, an easy pod and nothing else um, so it's as I say it's an all-in-one filter it, it can handle um, in terms of the, the the level of food that you're putting in uh, the easy pod will process ammonia from about 100 grams of food a day um, so um, if you if you you know if if that's uh, the kind of level that you're gonna be, be within then then it's a really good option uh, for the smaller pond small footprint relatively inexpensive as well um, very easy to maintain you just need to turn a couple of valves takes a few minutes uh, no getting your hands wet getting dirty very versatile um, limited obviously with the size of pond that, you, that it will handle but um, an excellent little filter uh, uh, so yeah at number four I've got the Evolution Aqua Easy Pod okay at number three I've got the Evolution Aqua Nexus uh, family of filters so the Nexus um, they sort of they changed the game a little bit really if you if you go back if you think back to the uh, to where I had multi bay filters at number eight um, Evolution Aqua essentially took the same principle but redesigned it so rather than all the bays being linear one after another um, they've got the big vortex the first bay but then the other mechanical and biological stages are then fitted within that vortex so it has a much smaller footprint than um than a multi-bay but it does work on the same principle just just circular rather than linear um, <clears throat> as such it's very easy to maintain it's it, it's purpose-built koi pond filter all-in-one filter mechanical and biological um, designed specifically for this uh, valves and and uh, etc where you need them cleaning again is 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 a matter of a sequence of valve turns um, 
it takes a little bit longer than the pod because it's it's a bigger scale but it, it it's not a difficult cleaning process you know five five ten minutes max a couple of times a week um no getting your hands wet no getting dirty um bigger than the pod but again a, a quite a small footprint given the capacity of the filter um price points uh above average but but uh in terms of value i'd say very good so very versatile um and there's there's two sizes of filter in the nexus range so the 200 series and a 300 series and they're basically the 300 is is bigger than the 200 uh go it handles uh, a bigger pond so you know you choose the the correct filter for your volume of pond and your fish levels um so yeah excellent filters um well worth a look at number three the evolution aqua nexus range of filters okay so number two uh, at number two i've got a rotary drum filter um often abbreviated to rdf now uh, um, a drum filter is a mechanical uh, filter only although you, 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 they are starting now to tag biological um, options on with them um, but essentially the drum filter itself is a mechanical filter they, they filter down to about 70 microns uh, so if you remember the sieve um, went down to 300 microns the drum goes down to 70 so much much finer much much better mechanical filtration um, in terms of cost they're extremely expensive um, they really are at the high end of, of of koi pond filters both in performance and and cost um, relatively small footprint but obviously you then need to to add biological filtration with it um, i guess the downsides other than the cost is is there are they are very complex um, a lot of electrical components uh, a lot to go wrong um, but they are extremely good at mechanical filtration and, and be, they're, they're almost entirely automated so this system monitors when it needs to be cleaned and then it cleans itself um, regularly throughout the day uh, so in terms of maintenance there should be zero maintenance um, so yeah at number two the rotary drum filter okay and now my number one okay, pond filter uh, i've got the Momotaro Baki shower um, so this is again a, a single filter a single type filter this does biological filtration only um, uh, in order to be a shower it needs to be it needs to be a stainless steel four tiers um, the correct dimensions of trays the correct dimension between the trays for the water to fall and accelerate um, you need massive volumes of water going pumping over them 3,000 4,000 gallons an hour plus per shower um, the key magical ingredient is the filtration media um, you must have an 1800c fired FIR fire infrared ceramic media uh, such as backy house media um, the backy house media was was the original media designed uh, and manufactured for this these, these showers um, there are a couple of alternatives now on the market. There are 1800C fired infrared ceramic medias. Um, have a look at them. There may be a little bit of cost saving. Um, look into it, but an original genuine backy house, uh, backy shower, you need backy house media. Um, downsides, incredibly expensive. Um, you need a lot of water you need to move a lot of water so you've got running costs from pumps etc pumping over them you make a bit of noise some people don't like that personally it doesn't worry me the sound of water um can chill can have a bit of a chilling effect wind chill um but you can box them in uh not a massive issue they'll look after biological filtration incredibly well they do a bit of mechanical filtration as well um, um but it is recommended to, to put some kind of mechanical filter before them. Um, I guess uh, the big thing with them, and I have no science, I can't tell you why, but I've used these filters and they work. Um, the water, they somehow, your water in your pond somehow becomes invigorated. It, it, your fish just come to life. Appetite goes through the roof, growth. Um, 
your well-being and the health of your car just goes through the roof. They really are uh, a, an excellent filter. Um, a lot of people try try and copy them, make their own. They don't tend to get the results. You, you need to do it properly to get the proper proper results. As I say, it is expensive. Um, you can make your own. They tend to be trickle towers, trickle filters, really, the ones that people make rather than the, the shower principle. Um, but they work. Um, they also provide a, a lot of aeration as well um, for your pond. Yeah, just an excellent all-round biological filter, some mechanical, but it's the magic that they put into the water, the effect they have on your fish, that you just can't put your finger on, really. Um, and that's why my number one top koi filter, koi pond filter, is the backy shower. Okay, thank you. That's uh, So that's... That's it for today's video. As you, as always, as ever, you know, if you like the video, um, please subscribe. It really helps um, keep me motivated, really help me grow the channel. Um, please click the bell so you receive notifications. I will post, I do post regular videos. Um, but also, probably more importantly, please leave a comment, um, good or bad, whether you agree, disagree, um, leave a comment. Um, uh, and let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's discuss it. Excellent. Thank you very much.